Okay, we'll move swiftly on then to the other finalist from the THE Awards, which is Dr. David Waring uh, from the University of Cent Central Lancaster. He's a microbiologist or medical microbiologist by training. And so David, if you are able to share your screen. Thanks very much for the invitation. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a funny thing. I, I haven't been in uh, teaching for very long, actually. So I was a bit uh, flattered and surprised and a bit shocked to, uh, for my head of department to say, uh, we're going to put you forward for this innovative teacher of the year thing, because I didn't know what, whether what I was doing was innovative or not. It was just what I was doing, essentially. Um, so uh, I said, OK, that sounds like a good, a good thing. Uh, I actually spent about 21 years working in the National Health Service. That was my, that was my first career as a biomedical scientist, as a medical microbiologist, and had some good experiences with public health England before when it was called the PHLS. And then I ended up working in the commercial world for about 17 years in a variety of different roles uh, before I sort of gave up the travelling life and, and, and came to... Um, UCLan as a lecturer, really, to kind of see out the twilight of my career. That was the idea. And um, so I'd, I'd sort of been here four years now. And uh, the first couple of years, I had a sort of free reign just to teach microbiology and not be burdened by any administration. But uh, like happens these days, you, you kind of get, you know, another microbiologist left. I was, I'm now the sole microbiologist here and end up being senior lecturer now course leader for a course that's going to start in September. So I started to get a little bit bogged down with administration, but I, I, I sort of uh, like to have fun with teaching. That's my uh, aspect. And um, um, as we were saying before, engagement with students and their learning um, is kind of the heart of what I'm trying to do. And um, what I try to do, I'm a first year tutor as well, which I think gives me an advantage in many respects in making a connection with students, because, um, you know, I make, having been in sales for a long time, I can make a point of trying to learn people's names as much as possible. You know, we have about 120 to 150 students, so I know some of the universities have much larger numbers, but when you can recognize people and know them and, you know, get their confidence, then they will allow you to, um, let's say, experiment a little bit. And um, if things don't always go right, they're quite forgiving. Whereas if, if, I, if, if you're standoffish, I think, perhaps that's not quite as easy to do. So um, having been here four years, I don't really have a set way of doing things. So I'm not dyed in the wool in any way. And each of the four years has been completely different because of COVID. So um, I'll just share some things that I've done. Um, they're a bit probably old school. They're not sort of high tech in many ways. But uh, I try to bring microbiology to life. And, um, you know, I, I know that students enjoy it. I try to enjoy it as much as possible. And uh, well, you can decide whether you think it's innovative or not. <laughs> Certainly the THE didn't think it was innovative enough to be the winner of the thing, but I'm quite glad about that because I probably would have got invited to do multiple talks about innovation and I'm not really sure what I do is innovation, but anyway, let's see. Um, I, went, but I start, actually never was an undergraduate, so I, I don't really know what it's like to be an undergraduate on the receiving end. I went to uh, Preston Polytechnic, which was before the UCLan, before it, before it was even in colour, you know, it was a black and white when I went back in those days and ended up doing a PhD part time. So, I, you know, I don't really know the undergraduate experience, but I want to try and make it good. Um, I've been to some other universities um, on online courses, your know, distance learning courses and so on. So I understand a little bit about distance learning and how disconnected that can feel a little bit. Um, so that might have prepared me for COVID, perhaps. I'm not sure. But um, anyway, that's um, that's a little bit of background so you can see where I'm coming from. I'm not, you know, professor of clever things that's been teaching it. You know, I've got grey hair, but I'm not professor of clever things that's been teaching for 100 years. I'm quite, quite new to the game. So uh, forgive me if I do things that you might feel shocking <laughs> as, a, as a lecturer if you've, had a, if you've been there for a long time and do it the right way. Um, I, I tend to, at the moment, I make, everything is a constant experiment with me in many respects because I don't like to do the same thing twice. Um, and so um, I'm experimenting a little bit with chunking at the moment to trying to give students an idea of where they're at. With, for no fault of my own, I attend lecture sessions. I tend to have two-hour lectures. That's the way we schedule things. That's quite a long time for people to concentrate. So, um, you know, I don't really enjoy it to our lecture unless I break it down into sections. So I've started to write an agenda down for students so they can kind of have an idea what's happening. I try and engage students in, you know, timing the breaks so that uh, I learned this is kind of primary school stuff, but it kind of helps to engage students in, 
in their own learning, you know. So I asked them, you know, would they appreciate having breaks? And they said yes. So we got them to time the breaks. Uh, I used to have an award ceremony for the most engaged student at the end of the year. We have some prizes, particularly in first year, for highest achievement, highest engagement, and so on. So I'm on the lookout for students who are really participating uh, in class, uh, asking questions, answering questions, that kind of thing. So I kind of nominate awards uh, awards panel, and they, they nominate a student at the end of the end of the uh, the session, and they can kind of like that. Sometimes of prizes, sometimes it's just like a vote towards the annual hundred pound prize that they get. Um, I ask people to try and remember, remind me to get record to record the sessions. We record all of our sessions, as you probably do, but often I get so kind of interested in what I'm doing, I forget to do that. So I try and. You know, let them know that, you know, it's, I'm not just going to do this thing to them. You know, they're part of it. Um, and so uh, the, I'm going to give you an agenda for this one. I kind of almost like a lecture that I might be giving. Uh, I'm going to talk about engagement with students, which is, I think, uh, one thing I try to do to build that relationship. And I'm going to tell you about the golden microscope and other competitions that I do. Uh, a tool that I did, which was... Uh, Alice's Adventures in Fungus Land, and a couple of examples of macro scale microbiology that I've been using, not necessarily driven by COVID or, or any other reason, but just having uh, used some feedback loops with students frequently, not just end of end of module or end of uh, end of year, but you know, um, frequently du during my teaching periods to figure out what's working well and what's not. Um, come up with a, a, a solution to some problems where I realized that wasn't communicating very well certain concepts. So I'll show you a couple of those. And um, they're quite low tech and you might find them a bit funny, but I'm finding them quite effective for learning some of the key concepts that are important. Most of this playfulness kind of aims at uh, first years and it diminishes a bit in the second year. Uh, and third year is a little bit more serious, but I can't guarantee that I don't do was there anything in third year either? Um, you know, innovation definition might be something new or different or introduction of new methods. As I said, I, I haven't, uh, I wasn't given the opportunity to watch uh, seasoned professionals do it uh, and mimic their methods. I just, I had to teach some sales lessons, so I just got going with it. And uh, this is the way I do it. And, and it seems to be a bit different than perhaps the mainstream. Uh, way of teaching. I'm not sure if it is, but uh, that's the idea. Um, when I was working in sales, we, we talked about uh, getting sales by catching the attention of the customer, generating interest, developing a desire, and uh, providing a roadmap to sales. And I would just change that to success for students. You know, I tell the students that I want them to be successful, and it's important to me, and it should be important to them. Try to create that emotional connection. I try and develop a desire for them to want to learn more. Try and make the subject as interesting as possible. And I think I have some advantages there because I've worked in two different industries and I've done quite a range of jobs. So I can I can sort of bring that to life in some of my personal experiences. Uh, and I do try and um, get their attention every now and again. I dressed as a gram positive bacillus yesterday, actually. So uh that's the kind of thing I do. The golden microscope, I thought of this, this is one thing that I use as a prize, but I sort of created this legendary golden microscope thing, which I just had a second hand microscope and sprayed it up. And um, students, you know, this is the award for good engagement um, in, a, in, a, in a session and they, they get a chance for a selfie with the golden microscope. And um, most students are happy to do that. And uh, I have a smile when I bring it. Sometimes I don't bring it, but most times I bring it. Um, you might see in the background on the uh, left-hand side there um, some balloons. Uh, I have one here. This is a this is a gram-negative bacillus with a flagellum. You know, again, silly thing, but actually I've used that quite effectively to talk about gram staining and peptidoglycan and uh, action of penicillin and, and stuff like that. And sometimes I just might just bring those balloons and leave them at the back. Don't even use them in a lesson, but somehow it's just playing on the mind of the student that they, oh yeah, what's that? I remember that. 
you know, in the first and second years for us, it's a lot about knowledge acquisition and uh, using as many tools as possible to try and connect some of these key concepts. So Golden Microscope is one of the sort of prizes um, that I use. And you can see this uh, one's got a smile and actually hasn't been with a smile on her face and uh, Julia, who's covering up her broad grin uh, with a mask, um, but it's quite popular. And um, another competition element, which uh, I sort of introduced a little bit of a con competitive element uh, in reflecting and trying to prepare for this lecture talk, sorry. Uh, uh, I realized I do quite a bit of competitiveness. So this is one that I did um, at the end of the first year, having taught the students all about bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi and various elements of microbiology. I challenged them to win a book uh, by recreating something at home that represents, you know, some microbiological theme. So I gave them on the left hand side, there is a picture of a gram negative diplococci with some polymorphonuclear leukocytes. It could be a gonorrhea or it could be meningitis. And I recreated that with egg and beans uh, one Saturday morning. And so um, the winner of my competition here showed me a bacteriophage infecting an E. coli with a cucumber and some cocktail sticks and various things. So in order to do that, you know, the students have to sort of uh, be able to understand the concept and visualize it and try and communicate it in a different way. So I think that's quite a sophisticated uh, thing for them to do. So um, they also had to write a little legend um, to that. So, you know, how do you write the first years? How do you write a legend for a figure, you know, practice at that kind of thing. So I've used that kind of device quite a lot um every now and again with a decent prize to motivate um as we were saying before um you know that engagement with students and what what works and what fails i think i had four entries to this one out of about 100 students so i try not to get too disappointed that not everybody wants to do this fun thing that i think is great um, you can only connect with a certain amount of people at a certain amount of time. That's something I'm coming to the realization of is that, um, you know, you've got to provide good and interesting content and some students will connect with it very well and others, it's not so important to them. Or they just want to pass their exam. And so uh, I'm finding that out a little bit. Um, I was most pleased actually, just as an anecdote in, in yesterday, one of my first year students showed me a picture. She'd been to London in the, um, reflection week break and taking her mum to see the Broad Street pump, which is very legendary in epidemiology for uh, Jon Snow and his intervention with cholera in London. So she'd been so motivated to, you know, take that, that lecture that I'd done on epidemiology and go and take her mum. That's really, I find that a very pleasing thing that you feel like you've made a connection. Um, so I, I shared this actually through the dry lab uh, science network um as an example which is um something that i did actually it's pre-covid this one but um uh, i was i was trying to demonstrate the um the princ principle of lateral flow devices um and uh, i used to use um, clostridium difficile gdh and toxin assay as the as the example um but it's you know antibodies and antigens they're they're sort of invisible aren't they so you have to visualize them somewhere and we have find all sorts of ways of doing that with ELISA and so on but even that uh i found that there's you know quite a lot of misconception about how these things work so i'd sort of scaled it up a little bit and so i used some uh, clothes pegs of different colors and uh, stuck some colloidal gold beads onto them and um the next slide will show you. Uh, so these are reagents. The aim here was to get the students to really understand the um, specific technical terms and use them well so they could write concisely whilst understanding this concept. And so they were tasked, this was their task. Um, originally it was, it was a GDH um, of, of, of Clostridium difficile, but I, I modified it to COVID for the last couple of years. But um, you know, everybody's using lateral flow devices and quite confidently students would say, oh yeah, I know how they work. And then I said, well, okay, let's see. And then you present them with some uh, macro scale nitrocellulose, some, some antibodies with beads stuck on them and uh, try to recreate that. And uh, they find it quite difficult, but I found this one, it's one of the, my favorite workshops actually, because 
um, they really struggle initially and then they get it and then they, oh, that's real, that's how it works. So they get these uh, macro scale objects and they've got to try and uh, demonstrate uh, the principle of this assay. Uh, and I gave them some outputs that they have to generate. So there's a bit of teamwork in here. They've got to physically represent the assay with a positive and a negative. They've got to draw a diagram uh, of how the assay works. I give them a couple of examples before, but I take them away. So they've got to try and recreate that typical textbook diagram and then write a short description using the technical language, which is aimed at getting them to try to write scientifically and concisely. And, it, and it's pretty popular. I actually, um, you know, I did this with it it's in small scale on a desktop, but I think I'm just going to go and grab it for you. But, yeah. Even I even I even built one large scale for them to to, to use, um, and challenge the students. I challenge the students to uh, what during COVID to do that at home with whatever they could find. Uh, and uh, we had uh, soft toys riding on top of other soft toys and a variety, you know, fruit and vegetables and all sorts of things to try and do it. But um, I think it worked particularly well as, a, as an exercise to try and scale something that's really happening, you know, invisibly almost. Um, uh, you know, you, you might see a colour change or whatever, but do you really know what's happening? That worked really quite nicely. So they, they, they've enjoyed that one. I got some very good feedback on that, that one. Uh, a thing that I, I do a lot, and again, it's I don't know how unusual it is. I don't think it's very unusual, but I, I, I do it a lot and the students like it a lot. Um, is uh, you know frequent uh, formative testing on what every lecture I do has a little test at the end it might be five questions and um, you know students can can assess their progress from that um, in this particular example you don't need to really think about the question but um, this is purely voluntary for them to take part you know 71 out of 120 students uh, did that that's that's pretty good i find in second and third years there's a little bit less compliance but in first year they're they're keen to do that and that gives them a sense they're always keen to know how well they did and it gives me a sense uh, also of um you know how well individual concepts are being learned uh, this is microsoft forms and they're so simple to set up including with images um, that now have a bank of, of uh, qu quiz questions that follow each lecture. Sometimes, if time allows, I'll go through the quizzes, you know, next next session, uh, the correct answers and the, the, the incorrect answers and so on. And um, it's quite popular with the students, actually. So I think part of the, the nomination that I had, you know, the students have to give some testimonials. And I think some of that comes from you know enjoyment that they had in these lectures and also the feedback is always we love the quizzes so i keep doing quizzes in different all sorts of different ways actually and um, even if i'm not teaching you know i might propose them i'm the first year tutor so for instance i had a christmas series of quizzes where the elf was asking questions about various subjects not even microbiology you know little five minute uh, tease or questions that they could do at the end of the day or the beginning of the day and uh, you know trying to capture the season I think that's something I probably picked up from working in sales is that you know frequently you might have a Easter sale or a Christmas special or something whatever um, you know just using the you know trying to create a good feeling and not everybody participates but you'll find I, I what I find is um, there's a small percentage 10 percent maybe that really love this kind of stuff and, and respond all the time and from that i find uh, students who are generally speaking willing to be in my uh, peer assisted student group for instance who a second and third years who help first years with their studies and so on so i can see leaders coming out because they're taking positive um care of their own education and trying to get every opportunity to to learn and assess how well they're learning so um that i do that kind of thing uh one of the things that uh has been quite you know really popular actually um is the buy sciences world cup so this is a we kick this off uh, it's part of the revision session for um 
for first years, uh, end of the, you know, the semester two exams, the big exams in May. And so after Easter, we kick off the Biosciences World Cup. They all get a chance to uh, nominate their favourite country. So they get a chance to do that. We have a, a velvet ball bag, which is uh, a velvet, velvet bag here, which contains the golden microscope at the moment. Um, pull the balls out of the bag. We have a ceremony for choosing the country who's playing against who. And then each day they have a five question quiz. They get a goal for every question they get right. Uh, if it's a draw, the, the team that answered the question the quickest uh, goes through to the next round. And it builds up and builds up and builds up. And then we have a, a grand final with Freddie Mercury singing, We Are the Champions, and the Champions League theme tune going off. And, um, you know, this was, uh, this was last year's um, 26 people entering a team. Again, not everybody's entering, but, you know, the ones that get into it really love it. Um, six rounds, 52 questions, 343 goals, the winning team, Nigeria. So this was a Nigerian student who was absolutely made up, you know, that he'd won the competition for Nigeria, really felt national pride and all that kind of stuff. Those students who perhaps get knocked out but um, really want to participate, uh, play for the golden boot so you can continue to carry on playing and answering questions and if you answer most questions you win the golden boot so you know just if you're unlucky enough to play against somebody good and quick uh, you can still be part of it so again it's certainly riding a bit of a sentiment you know it, it could be changed into something else for instance in second year um I have the Quidditch World Cup, similar kind of format. It's not based on sport, but maybe people are interested in, in the Harry Potter. Similar kind of format. Um, but here we have this uh, golden snitch question, which I think works quite nicely. So sometime during the day, I th I'll throw a question out and uh, the f first one to answer immediately gets through to the next round. And you'd be amazed how quickly people answer these questions. They're really... You know, the ones that are into this competition are looking out for the question and I get responses within two to three minutes most of the time. So, um, you know, and that's quite popular. Again, it has a, it has a little uh, prize, which I made a, made a golden snitch out of wood and sprayed it up and everything. So they play for that. Um, again, a revision-based quiz uh, just for, for, for a time of the year. You know, with, with a large group of students, I mean, I call it a large group anyway, we have got, I think, 140 first year this year. Uh, everybody's going to be into something different. And so, you know, trying to provide things that everybody can take part in, but also things that may be of niche interest. I'm particularly interested in parasitology. So uh, I have a couple of, um, I don't know if you call them elective clubs. They're not, it's not really a society, but I have one on parasitology and I have one for antimicrobial resistance and we meet once or twice a month, uh, depending this particular one. Um, we, um, we listen to a podcast, which is run out of uh, Cornell University, uh, and uh, they present some information on parasitology. They have a case every month. You can solve the case right into the podcast and win a signed copy of a book. And um, it's absolutely a wonderful thing. The students, I've got about, I think, six or eight now, um, uh, students uh, working on this and uh, you know they're driving the thing now and uh, they absolutely love it you know that every time the new episode comes out there's a, a you know a flurry of emails going around well we've been we've been mentioned again we've been mentioned again we won a book uh, last time in fact last time we won um, we won the book and uh, the authors of the podcast said you know this sounds like a really good cause because we obviously advertise it as the Parasitology Club of uh, University of Central Lancashire. And uh, they said, we can have you know enough books. How many books do you want? They asked us. So the students were delighted with that. And uh, you know it's a sort of uh, um, a, niche, a niche thing, but again, connecting with, you know, I would call this stretching, stretching those students who really want to push themselves a little bit out of the, out of the norm. The AMR Club, um, we're involved in World Health Organization's antimicrobial uh, resistance uh, day um, and did some uh, public engagement and so on. So, um, you know, little niche things which don't take too much of my time. They're part of my, I, I'm not a full, you know, I'm not 
engaged in a like say a major research program because this is sort of the, the twilight of my years as it were um i would say this is kind of my extra curricular work that i do is just to try and engage with different groups of students and try and open their eyes to some different uh, different aspects um that's that's you know this is the case study that gets done you know we we solve the case study pretty advanced skills in terms of understanding you know clinical scenarios geography of different parasites symptomology diagnostics and so on and um, th those particular students that engage in this i think you know they really would uh, developing their microbiology skills um, you know really stretching themselves so that's really it's really nice um last thing i wanted to show you was this uh thing which is alice's adventures in fungus land which is an interactive powerpoint uh, i think this is i don't think this is particularly novel but uh, it's one of the things that was mentioned in the citation uh, thing and i may have to switch uh, a little to uh, let me go to a new share and i'll just switch this one so you can see how this one works uh, okay let's just uh so okay good right okay so um you can see a different screen now i think so you got alice here I, it's got a like an instructions page on how to do things and then the students get you know images so for instance if you want to dive into uh um this manky looking foot click on that and it will tell you about superficial mycoses maybe we want to find out about uh dermatophytes so we go to this page and it tells us about the diagnostic uh, procedures let's look at the microscope here and we can see some uh, skin scales which have been uh, investigated for fungal hyphae we can see some fungal hyphae you've got to describe what kind of fungal hyphae you can see so i'm just going to click on that okay what does it well let me have a look at this one this is uh, uh what how would i describe this particular one flat powdery blue pale or buff click on that one it'll tell me that this is microsporum canis show me the macroscopic features and i can click on the doctor and go to the treatment and so on um maybe this talks about ergosterol biosynthesis i can look at how that fits with the cell wall etc and then back so it's a kind of self-directed you know the students can dive into this and then of course uh, subsequent to that there'll be a quiz um so it allows them an opportunity to dive in and this was kind of developed just a little bit before um kobe but i've used it a lot because students can spend quite a bit of time here and we can dive into this uh, uh teaching most of the mycology that they need for first year just just with this particular tool alone so that's um that's all i have for you really i think uh, just to show you a few of the things that i've been experimenting with um i've showed you the balloons haven't i yeah so at the, the moment I, i've just finished teaching first years and use my uh my balloons to um to show them gram staining and that seemed to work quite well. I did have the entire uh, faculty senior management team uh, with a mop and bucket taking a nasal swab and doing the um, lateral flow device in a, in a human sized form. We sort of scaled it up with uh, with balloons and mops and buckets, which I think Jonathan Van Tam apparently has done something similar in the Royal Society. So um, I think he, I'm claiming that he copied it off me, but you never know. He's a smart guy, so I'm sure he's drawn it for himself. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that I've been doing, physical representations, quizzes, trying to make it interesting and fun and um, not very high tech, actually, as it happens. And uh, yeah, that's that's everything I've got for you today, guys. Hopefully uh, um, you found that interesting. I don't know if you found it innovative, but certainly uh, that's the way I'm doing it these days. Uh, David, wow. Um... I've been furiously scribbling notes while you've been talking. I've got so many ideas I want to try and implement now, and I'm desperately <laughs> trying to think of how I'm going to do a Star Wars themed World Cup. Um, <laughs> I love that idea; it's just so good. That's your thing, yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. If you, if you, you know, if you've got something that you're you, you're interested in, you've got some terminology. It just brings it, it brings it to life. Yeah, that sounds uh, sounds like a good thing. Yeah, I don't know what they'll have something what they on Star Wars where they can compete against each other. I'm sure, <laughs> good we will. luck with that. <laughs> Um, if guys have got questions that they want to pop into the chat or they want to unmute, then uh, please do. Uh, David asked a question uh, right at the start of your presentation when you were describing your background. 
Mm -hmm. So do you think that your background of coming in a different path means that you're not set in the mind of this is a way it was done to me, so this is a way I will do it? Do you think that actually helps you be more, more of the innovative teacher that you, you clearly are? I think so, yeah. I mean, we we had some tutorials from Phil Race, so I know he's got some, he's got, you know, does a lot on pedagogy and so on. And um, he talked about Sage on the stage and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I don't see myself as, uh, you know, terribly academic, um, more like, let's just say, uh, got some good life experiences. So I wouldn't call myself a Sage on a stage, but I've had to communicate with people um, well, because working in a commercial environment, you have to make connections and people have to trust you. Um, to for you to lead them to where you want them to go, and so I think that makes a difference. Um, and I think having um, you know different experiences in different jobs, you know, I can bring you know I do tell a story every now and again about when I, you know back in my old, in the old days I did this that and the other. Um, so I, I'm not set in any way. You know, I wasn't given a template of what to do. And in fact, quite early on, after the first year, the other microbiologist who'd been here for 25 years retired. So I didn't really have anything to follow. I had to kind of make it up. And um, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, I don't take myself too seriously. I take microbiology seriously. I really want people to love it. Uh, and I think I'm quite emotional about my delivery. You know, I want, I'm passionate about it. And I think students uh, hopefully will see that passion and find it. You know, I, I had mentors which gave me opportunities to do things that were a bit different. And uh, like with my little clubs that I do, I'm, I, I think I like to try and offer the same thing. If I can help one or two people step out of the mass of the students and do something a bit different, then that's what I will try and do and go a little bit extra mile for, for students who really show the effort um, to want to do something more. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm not set in my ways, that's for sure. I'm not even sure if I will ever get set in my ways. <laughs> I keep experimenting with different things. I think in terms of the passion that you, you show, and very clearly Hazel said in the, in the chat, it makes me smile. I even, it even makes me want to study microbiology. So you've already reached somebody in the audience today on that, <laughs> clearly. Um, oh, Isabel yeah. asks, how do you get a budget uh, for, for these things and help to do these activities? Where, is that just goodwill from colleagues or is there, like, how, how do you actually fund all of these things? Budget? Uh, I mean, this is all low key. I mean, if I buy balloons, I just buy them myself. Generally, I bought a bucket and bucket and uh, I've got to grab my bucket from under there. Sometimes I just buy them myself. You may, you know, if you're buying something that's twenty pounds for the sake of argument, you know, to do my uh, macro scale uh, lateral flow device, it probably cost me fifty pounds worth of time to fill a form out to send to somebody to get some money back. I just see that as a bit of a waste of time. Um, I, I don't worry too much about it. everything's pretty low low budget for me for these little gimmick gimmicky things you know a bag of pegs a pound from your cheap b and bargains or whatever so nothing's really expensive uh, you know I'll, I'll sometimes you know I, I bought a few books myself I, do, I don't want to get sort of uh, sometimes it's more effort to try and convince someone to do something I'll often fund these things myself to quite honestly yeah, it's, it, but it is low low tech stuff. I mean, for me, that's the beauty of it. If you can, if you can do something with pegs and stuff. I mean, I sometimes go to uh, what was it called uh, that place where they have cra all that crafting stuff. I'll go looking around. My wife likes to do that crafting. So I'll go looking around. I think, what can I get from here that will give me an opportunity to demonstrate something? Because you know, microbes are pretty small microbes you know so you, you can't often see them and it's like a picture you know in a textbook can how can you bring that to life you know so i'm constantly trying to find ways to scale up things to try and get better understanding so yeah i quite like doing that it's quite creative like our former speaker i forgot what her name was uh, kath uh you know you've got to be a bit creative sometimes and it's quite fun I quite like that oh, on that note where did your where did your inspiration come from? Is it just you'll you'll see something and come up with an idea, or uh, do you know? I woke up the other night thinking I should be a stand-up comedian. Sometimes I, I want to try and make people like what I do. So uh, you know, I'm kind of constantly a bit, you know, imposter syndrome. Am I am I any good? You know, so you oh God, someone will like will like this. Um, I I I, I don't know. I, I, it just it's just a kind of creative mindset I suppose is is how can I make this come to life realistically I, I had a guy who taught me ONC uh, you know bearded guy 
you know, whole knitted cardigan, he used to jump on the desk and wave his arms around like flagella. You know, you kind of you kind of get get it, don't you? You know, you get what's well, he talking about this thing waving around. So my little, you know, this kind of thing, I thought, what will, what will people think about that? Actually, they loved it. I tried it with third years, right? And I was doing things like uh, gram gram negative diplococci, right? Put them near my head, meningitis, Neisseria meningitis. Put them near my genitals, Neisseria gonorrhea, right? You think that's a bit daft, isn't it? But to be honest, they loved it and they thought it was funny. But they also thought, you know something, yeah, I, I can remember that. And I got some people who said, that was a good way of doing it. So I'll try stuff. And, and as Kath said, sometimes you try it and you think, oh, I went down like a bad joke. And you don't try it again, or you try and perfect it or improve it or whatever. So I will try things. And I'm not too worried about if it doesn't work perfectly first time. Uh, but I'll try and get feedback. You know, I, I, often I'll give them, the students, a piece of paper for something in the, in the lecture and make them produce something um I, you know, i'm talking i'm talking i don't know how long we've got but um make them produce something i learned i learned i trained actually as a high school teacher for a year and what they what they do a lot in high school is they make students produce something as a result of the learning and you can't get away with having not written something down in your book so i'll get them to write something down and then i'll see whether they're getting it or not and I'll ask them to write on the back give me some feedback on the session did you like it did you not like it what was good what was not good so if you keep harvesting that you've got an idea and that you can constantly improve what you're trying to do and if somebody says yeah that was really great fantastic then you know that you've connected a little bit so i think feedback from students as much as you can get it simply is really valuable to know whether you you're making that connection so i, I do i do quite a bit of that yeah, I think that willingness to to try something and fail is is so important. Uh, yeah, having an environment where you can do that is is equally important. Uh, yeah, it's just not that much reputation, you know, to do the damage. You know, I'm not professor of something. Do you know what I mean? So I don't really feel like somebody will say, "Oh, he's no idea what he's talking about." <laughs> so I can I feel confident enough to just try some things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so David's popped in the chat. The sort of thing that students always comment on in my lectures is the objects brought in. So obviously that's a, a really good way of explaining things and getting students to remember. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what odd one out? That's a good one, isn't it? You know, put a slide. What's his odd one out? And it could be any one of the five things you put up there. But it's a talking point. Why do you think it's the odd one out? You know, or what? What have I brought this? What's in the bag? You know, it's just it wakes people up. You know, that's another thing I got from high school, which is uh, you know the active starter. Is like we're we're, off, we're we're now doing stuff, you know. Don't wait to get join in when that we've started. Get your mind on this thing, and and like you say, sometimes I'll just bring something and I won't even use it. It'll just sit in the background, and the students be thinking, "What's what's that for?" Yeah, worms. That's a good one. I got some worms. I got some ticks from a dog. Fetch them, and you know that's a good <laughs> conversation pieces. Yeah. But I have a lot of stories that I can bring from when I was working in microbiology as well, which I think is good, you know, uh, helpful, um, sometimes emotional. Yeah, that, that real work, real world context for the students. Yeah, yeah, I think that that somehow is helpful because I think, I think it can be you can be considered. You tell me if if so if you're a lifelong academic, then you might. I don't know if people perceive that you know is that your job then you're not doing a, another job right but i you know i've done for instance uh, um investigation of cerebrospinal fluid on my four-year-old niece who had meningitis you know that's an emotional capture uh, capture for for starters like wow flipping heck yeah and i'm like yeah wow it was that was a scary day but i can tell that emotional story and i think that creates, creates a connection it's a real it's a real story it's not a invented thing so um i have the benefit of that sometimes so i think i you know wherever can i use those real world stories to try and help uh help them connect with the subject so yeah. i love microbiology it's fun, it's fun. you can tell is there any other questions for david because i've been hogging the conversations anyone wants to unmute or pop questions into the the chat there's a lot of chats so i haven't really looked at the chat so it's mainly in response to your Quidditch World Cup and things like that. So was it? Yeah. <laughs> no, it was. It was. It worked. It was popular. It's a little bit of work, but uh, I find it's it's good. Uh, a lot of excitement around that. Okay, brilliant. 
Um, there's no more questions coming through. So, uh, David, thank you very much. It's really entertaining. Um, I've picked up so many ideas from that. I'm sure everybody else has. Uh, and so sort of low tech is obviously, you know, always very, very good, very, very easy. Yeah. So, Thanks, Nigel. Things work well. so thank you very much for your time. Greatly appreciated. No, thank you very much for the invitation. It's been a, it's been a pleasure to, to share and hopefully some might have been useful to some to some people.